The case for owning gold royalty companies goes beyond, you know, even the gold allocation. It's uh, owning gold royalty companies makes sense uh, in your portfolio no matter what. Hello, this is Florian Munch uh, here from the Sprott Natural Resources Symposium in 2019. I'm here uh, with uh, Trey Wasser from Ely Gold, a royalty company uh, which focuses pretty much on Nevada. Might you give us a short introduction about uh, Ely Gold? Well, Ely Gold is a, a junior merging royalty company. Uh, we've only been uh, made a transformation about three years ago from an uh, exploration and development company uh, into a, a royalty company. We have a little bit different business model, although we have a, uh, been building up our royalty portfolio two ways. Uh, we stake and uh, sell properties and keep a royalty. Uh, and uh, we also have been purchasing royalties in the secondary market. So we're currently up a portfolio of 33 royalties. Uh, three are producing uh, today. And uh, we've got some uh, exciting development properties that will be producing uh, over the next few years. And you have a focus on Nevada. Why is that? Uh, Nevada is just a great jurisdiction. I mean, people don't realize how much gold mining still happens in Nevada, but uh, <clears throat> Nevada has just been ranked by the Fraser Institute as the number one mining jurisdiction in the world. Uh, if Nevada were a country, it'd be the fourth largest gold producing country in the world uh, behind uh, Russia or China, Russia, and Australia. So it's, it's a great area. You can mine there or explore most of the year. Uh, uh, there's, uh, it's a very stable environment, obviously, in the United States as far as the taxation and, and the, uh, the royalty situations. Uh, it's easy to get to uh, and easy to travel around uh, once you're there. So all in all, uh, it's a great jurisdiction. And we talked uh, before the interview, uh, so one of the, uh, the big advantages you have in Nevada is your database. Um, would you uh, elaborate on this? Well, we, uh, when we transformed to a royalty company, we bought all of the assets uh, from a longtime prospector in Nevada, Jerry Bachman. Jerry stayed on and, and he runs our royalty subsidiary in, uh, in Nevada. We have a Reno office. And he's been doing this for over 35 years now and built up a database. Then a year later, we bought out another longtime prospector, Bill Sheriff. And Bill came on the board, and he had even more data than Jerry, quite a bit more. He had been collecting data from all the old companies that did the exploration in the 80s, Atlas Gold and Union Carbide. And uh, so that database is very valuable. It helps us identify properties that you know, have, have gold on them, a lot of them have, um, have been mined before but not been explored in this cycle and that's where we're very strong at generating these properties and that's why if you, you know, if you look at our website or the presentation you'll see that, you know, the people who are working these properties for us are literally the who's who of mining companies. Yeah, Nevada is a great spot, uh, and I think there will be a lot of attraction coming to it uh, in the in the coming or already starting uh, gold cycle. So, uh, really yeah. interesting. Yep, yeah, everybody wants to be in Nevada. I won't say everybody, but uh, uh, it's it's had a real renaissance, and it's uh, more and more companies are realizing that you know from an expense the expense side for getting the exploration done. It's very good, you know, very few places you ever have to do any helicopter mining or, you know, and like I said, it's a, most places it's not seasonal. Uh, so very good environment. Mm -hmm. And you're uh, currently a relatively small company uh, between 30 and 40 million market caps, is that right? Uh, we're just about, as of this morning, maybe in Canadian dollars, about 30 million mm -hmm. market cap. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we think we're very undervalued compared to some of our peers. Uh, uh, again, on the way, uh, in the presentation, you can see we compare very well with companies like Metala and uh, Abitibi Royalties, uh, where we have similar number of royalties. We have 
uh, we'll produce a little over $3 million in revenue, so we stack up very well with them on the revenue cash flow side. Uh, but, you know, those companies sell for well over $100 million market cap. And uh, <clears throat> so we think as the market is becomes more aware of what we're doing and we sign just a few more deals, we... Uh, uh, we expect to see the stock re-rated uh, higher, hopefully sooner rather than later. And what I like about it in general is you really have uh, a sustainable business model. So there's uh, cash coming in uh, even if the cycle doesn't lift and you're not so dependent on the gold price. Uh, that's right. We've uh, Through our property sales, we, uh, we generate revenue throughout the year. It's that money is for the most part that we've put back into... Uh, into the purchasing of royalties uh, from third parties on existing mines, that type of thing. But, uh, you know, we have done a couple of capital raises this in the last, uh, since the first of the year, but they were very strategic. One was with Rick Rule, uh, you know, who puts on this conference, took a 9.9% position in the company, been right at the first of the year. And then more recently, Eric Sprott came in and made an investment in the company. Uh, it uh, took 5.6% position uh, in April. It's a good sign if you have the big names in. <laughs> it's definitely, they, definitely a story uh, investors should look at. <laughs> yeah, when the check says Sprott on it, you take the check. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so, Trey, uh, anything else you would like uh, investors to know? Uh, well, I think that just understanding the royalty space is very important for investors. You know, gold's coming back in favor now, and you have a, <clears throat> you know, people starting to look at their allocation of gold. Well, if you look at gold ro royalty companies, the advantages and disadvantages in performance compared to the gold ETFs, uh, and of course, holding the physical gold is always nice. So I'll, I, 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 I won't say that I don't uh, uh, hold the physical gold. But, but between the ETFs and the other gold equities, the royalty companies have significantly outperformed uh, both those. And of course, the royalty companies have also outperformed uh, the physical gold. Uh, but one thing that's that's very interesting that most people probably don't realize is that the top two royalty companies, uh, Franco Nevada and <coughs> Silver Wheaton, uh, Wheaton Metals call it now, Wheaton Royalty, uh, they over the last 10 years have outperformed the S&P. So the case for owning gold royalty companies goes beyond you know, even the gold allocation, it's uh, owning gold royalty companies makes sense uh, in your portfolio no matter what. It's a good good chance for investors looking for gold exposure but not taking the risk so much. That's the beauty of a royalty yeah. company is, you know, you have, you have a, a stated income. Uh, most of the royalties are uh, net smelter, or, which means it really comes right off the top of the sales. Uh, the only deductions are the little bit of smelter cost for refining the metal. Uh, none of the production costs, uh, none of the, uh, and, and, and yet on most uh, projects, you get all the exploration upside for free. So, you know, when you look at the projects, especially our projects, which a lot of them are younger, but when you look at the potential over the next five, ten years for some of our properties that uh, either are currently producing to get bigger or, you know, that are going to come on stream in the next couple of years. Uh, you know, I would again urge uh, your your viewers to go to the website and also there uh, subscribe to our mailing our email list and watch uh, for my corporate updates that I do at town hall meetings with uh, Otis and Mandy. Uh, and we try and do those every other one we try and do earlier in the morning uh, so that we can reach the European market too. But they are also always on a replay. So there I'm giving an update, uh, the whole presentation. We have a long Q&A with investors and uh, uh, and for anybody who, who gets on and into the replay, they can still email in their questions to Otis and Mandy and we'll get, uh, we'll get their questions answered.